And here we are, folks. It's Tuesday, and that means the Wisconsin primary is underway, and the entire campaign takes on a new meaning, depending on the results tonight. We've had a lull. We've had a couple of weeks between the last primaries. The lull has been filled with the usual blather about polls, opinions, what-ifs, hypotheticals. But now we're going to get some hard results tonight, and the expectation game is in place. Greetings. Great to have you. Another three hours of broadcast excellence. I'll rush Bo at 800 800- uh, 282 2882, the email address lrushbo at eibnet.com. So, here's basically in a nutshell if Cruz wins tonight, the conventional wisdom is that that resets the entire primary and sets Cruz on a path to win it. That's what people are saying, conventional wisdom. The other side, if Trump wins Wisconsin, which, based on polling data, would be considered an upset. If Trump wins Wisconsin, then the same conventional wisdomers are saying that it's over. And, in you know, in almost both instances, the conventional wisdom wants you to believe that it is over after tonight. If, If Cruz wins, it means it's the end of it for Trump. Because then the burden shifts to him to win big in New York and to win big in Pennsylvania. Not just win, but to win big. Uh, Ditto in New Jersey. If it goes all the way to California, latest polling data in California, which is in early June, has uh, Trump and Cruz tied. Uh, So so and it's fascinating to me that everybody wants this over. Or at least they're saying things that make it look like they want this to be over. And I don't think that's really the case. I think too many people are enjoying the unknown, the unpredictability, and the drama of all of this. But yet when you get down to the various uh, advocate sides, both sides, we're leaving Kasich out of this for the moment. Because he's not really in it in the moment. One for 31. The guy's won one state, and they're still talking about him, and it's only in the eventuality of an opener contested convention. But the Cruz people, really a lot invest tonight. Cruz wins tonight. They're, the conventional wisdom is it resets the whole thing. Uh, Trump will not have won in five primaries a row, they will be saying. Uh, and the conventional wisdom says that here's Trump. What's his big selling point? That we're going to win with Trump. We're going to win. There's going to be so much winning, we're going to get tired of winning. There's going to be so much winning, we're going to ask President Trump to lose now and then just to keep us humble. But after tonight, if Trump loses Wisconsin, there's no winning. I mean, there's no momentum. This will be the fourth or fifth primary in a row that Trump has not won. So it'll make his primary message winning a little empty. So goes the conventional wisdom, and that's why it would reset everything and mobilize forces for for Cruz. Um, now, there, it's interesting on the Cruz side of the. Don't get mad at me here. I'm just sharing with you some things that I've learned in recent days. There's a lot of support for Cruz out there. I I, I don't think people understand what's really going on throughout the so-called conservative movement. As I am here to tell you that there are some in the conservative movement who will not be unhappy at all if Hillary Clinton becomes president because they can keep their fundraising up. They keep the donations coming in by warning everybody of the disasters that are going to happen with Hillary Clinton in the White House. The same thing they accuse me of, essentially, except in my case it isn't true. I have, you know, for 27 years I've had various people in media say, you know what, Limbaugh's talking a good game. He really loves the Democrats winning because that's when his show really has got things to bounce off of and there's villains and there's enemies. And it's not true. I, uh, I really do care about the country. But there are some in the conservative movement. I mean, I'm going sh- to move the so-called allegation around a little bit. There's some. I wouldn't have believed this, by the way, had I, had I not been given some incontrovertible ev- controvertible evidence of it. Um, but there are some people... Not advocating for Hillary to win. They're just not going to be upset if if she does. They are primarily anti-Trumpsters. 
This group of conservatives despises Trump. They they worry horribly about Trump for the very same reason. If Trump wins and everybody is going to agree that he's not a movement conservative guy, then it's going to impact negatively conservative movement fundraising, donations and power structures and so forth, because they're not going to be able to claim that they're helping Trump. They're not going to be able to claim that they're tight with Trump. So never, never discount the role of money. You know that that Michael Gerson piece in the Washington Post that I really haven't gone into great detail on on purpose, but he uh, he wrote this piece blaming me for Trump, blaming me for everything. It was, just, it was, it was a pretty big hit piece. But those happen routinely now, so I didn't comment it. But the thing in it that really upset him more than anything was that my allegations about certain members of the establishment wanting to preserve their financial circumstance, their life's... In other words, that they are being oriented, motivated by money. Oh, did that offend them? Because, you see, they want to be seen as above all of those mundane concerns, like how do you pay the bills? They're so much more important than that. They're so much bigger. They don't they don't have such concerns. Those, such concerns would never ever influence their intellectualism. And there I went and said it. But you can't deny it. It's it's true for everybody. I mean, even in the um, one of the large constituency groups of Trump, what what's motivating a lot of support is stagnant wages for 15 years among a significant portion of America. It matters. Everybody knows it matters. Follow the money. You'll always, most of the time anyway, be able to answer a lot of questions to which the answers don't make sense until you apply the money aspect to it. So fundraising and donations, people live and die on that. They need certain, certain circumstances for that to max out. And they they either, they one of two things. They need to be either be able to, to position themselves as powerful enough to stop the enemy, like Hillary. Or they have to be able to portray themselves as up close, personal, and tight enough with whoever is in power to have great influence over that person. If one of those two circumstances doesn't eventuate, then they panic. And Trump is what equals one of those two circumstances not eventuating. I mean, people I'm talking about, and there are a lot of them, it's, uh, they've been totally disposed against Trump since the beginning for a whole host of reasons. But they don't tell you this reason that I am explaining to you. And what they do, their cover is that they are for Cruz. This is my real point with this. Um, they, they make a point of making it look like their opposition to Trump is rooted in support for Cruz, but it really isn't. Not that they oppose Cruz, but the the, the thing that it motivates them and, and informs them, that uh, ambulates them, if you will, is really uh, opposition to Trump, which includes not being all that upset if Hillary wins. Then you have the same token. You've got some people in conservative movement who are dead set against Trump and for Cruz strictly for principle and honor and patriotism and so forth. So the uh, the interests here are many and they are varied and they are deep and many of them are personal. So if Cruz wins conventional wisdom, that's it for Trump. That's four or five loss, losses in a row. That destroys the brand of winning. It obviously brings to a screeching halt any momentum, and it will then begin uh, presenting coverage. Why? What has gone wrong? What did go wrong? What is wrong with Trump? That begins a whole series of negative coverage, such as the polling data on his unfavorables, uh, primarily with women. If Trump pulls an upset and wins, then it becomes a matter of 1237. Looks like he can make it. And in that sense, it will be over. So a lot of people, after all of these primaries, and we've had days like this where people said, this is it. This is what happens tonight. This is going to determine the outcome. Those are media people interested in ratings. But it's true again tonight. They're saying what happens tonight, Wisconsin will probably tell us how this is all going to end. 
but it will not tell us if it does, takes us to a contested, brokered, whatever convention. It will not tell us what's going to happen there, which continues the possibility for Casey, continues the possibility for Paul Ryan, who's saying so often that he doesn't want it that you begin to be suspicious. And then Marco Rubio is out there desperately holding on to his delegates, obviously wants to have some leverage in what uh, in what happens. So that basically is the way the table gets set. That's how all this happens today. I myself am not going to know until about 11 o'clock tonight or midnight what happened because I got to go to New York. I have to zip up to New York after the program and have a an annual event tonight, and I'll be able to sneak a peek now and then, but not much. So I won't know, and I will, I, I will not get home probably until 2 a.m. tomorrow. Oh, well, yeah, I'm zipping back. You don't think I'm staying up there and let the tax authorities figure out I'm doing work up there? No way. That'd trigger another three-year audit. No, so I will zip right back. I'll get back about 2 in the morning, and I will be able to figure out what all happened on the, on the flight home, on the plane ride home. So none of what I do here will be interrupted. I just, I just want you to know if you're thinking, gee, what does Rush think of this? I won't know unless something so outrageous happens that the event tonight's interrupted for people to learn. But the event tonight is not political in any way, shape, manner, or form, so... Yeah, the watch will be vibrating, and I'll have the phone with me, but I'll be able to check now and then. But, I mean, I'm not going to be able to get into in-depth stuff. I'm not going to be able to listen to speeches, victory, defeat, speeches, what have you, whatever happens, until 11 o'clock, when it's all over. I mean, I assume it's going to be known by 11, Eastern time.